Hi everyone, Nicolas Brass here to introduce you to my new sound paint instrument, the Tie Floor Keyboard. You probably know xylophone, metallophone, but do you know Tie Floorophone? You can get a tune note out of a lot of different materials in bar shapes, if you know where to hold them. Not here, not here, here. And one of my favorite is Tie Floor. I found a lot of this one in the trash, enough for a 2 octave and a half chromatic keyboard, so I made it, and the sound is great. By the way, you can watch the full building process on my YouTube channel. We sampled it for you so you can play too, I hope you will have some fun. Hey everyone, my name is Dan Shimolinsky. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are back checking out another custom instrument this week. This is from the masterful mind of Mr. Nicholas Brass. This is the Tile Floor Keyboard. I am sure you just finished hearing from the man himself about how this instrument was created, and so it is gonna be my job to demo it for you. So let's take a look. Now you get two parts with the Tile Floor Keyboard Library, a hard part and a soft part. Anytime you are hitting something and recording it, you are gonna get some form of resonance, be it a drum or a piece of metal or a floor tile. You can really boil down the character of any tonal percussion instrument to its attack and its resulting resonance. And the two very unique timbres here to choose from are super useful. So I'm going to just get into the demo right now. Here's what the hard part sounds like. So a very clear attack, a very strong upper harmonic resonance, and almost gives like a combination of like a glockenspiel and a xylophone and a bell. Really, really super useful and unique timbre. And then let's check out the soft one. Do you know I'm always good for an A-B comparison, just real quick? Here's hard, and here's soft. And of course you get the sensitivity of the velocities that we always get in these libraries in sound paint. It's very, very cool. Because the soft part is a softer substance hitting the tile, you do get a little bit more focus on the fundamental. So you might wanna use hard or a blend of both if you really wanna try and create the ideal balance between harmonic and fundamental. So yeah, that's it. Let's head over to the program section where you will find 15 programs designed by yours truly. And this is one of those rare occurrences where I think I'm just gonna kinda of go through most of them, all of them possibly. This first one is called bowls. And I actually did use the method that I just talked about having one soft part and one hard part. And I used a linked envelope here with a very slow attack, a little bit of a backed off sustain and a nice gentle release. So a very fluffy ADSR. We've got an EQ, compressor, chorus, going into a Lexi reverb. And it kind of just gave me like metal bowl vibes. Maybe you'll agree. Let's check it out. So a nice gentle sound coming from a relatively hard attack library. Definitely use offset and envelopes to just see what it sounds like when you start your samples a little bit into them. Can yield some really cool stuff. This one's called Cute Glockenspiel, and I tried to get the closest sound of like what in my mind a glockenspiel sounds like. We have an octave separation here between these two parts, both hard, an EQ, a digital delay, which you can bring in with the mod wheel, and a plate reverb. So 
so very focused on that attack. You can see I really kind of tried to dig out some frequencies in the 4K range. Just consistently found that was the best way to kind of get a true glockenspiegel kind of attack sound. Here's one called Dream Strummer, and this is utilizing the ARP section. I have two parts here, one tuned a fifth above, I believe, and some fun little intervals in here. So yeah, guaranteed good time. Yeah, so I mapped the mod wheel to both the decay and the release of the envelope, just in case you wanted to turn the ARP off and use this sound as kind of like a keyboard. The decay will match the uh, release. Must have been in a dreamy mood, because this one is called dreamy. <laughs> So just a simple little kind of keys part there. We've got our mod wheel to the LFO amount, I believe, a touch, a little bit, and also to the low pass cutoff and tone of the compressor. And then I did a main program for both the hard and soft parts. So just a tasteful EQ with little tiny changes between the two, you can see there, and then just a tasteful amount of plate reverb. Here's what the hard one sounds like. and the soft one. So I tried to lean into the timbre of each of those respectively. <laughs> this one's kind of fun. This one is called House Minor and it's just a minor chord kind of in the house music style. Nothing too fancy, just a little bit of tuning, a ladder filter, EQ, digital delay, Lexi reverb. Here's what the matrix looks like. Let's play some house chords. Sweet. And then almost just as like a sound design experiment, I tried to create the sound of microphone feedback. Yes, like microphone talking too close to the monitor. And it worked out pretty well. I was really trying to lean into the resonances and just kind of the overtones from these parts. And I threw it into a filter and an analog distortion, did some one note sames and some tuning on three parts here. I think it sounds like mic feedback. Tell me what you think. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Test one, two, test. <laughs> Just, you know, having fun with it. I also use the time tool I forgot to mention on all three of these parts to kind of get like a drone effect to really lean into the feedback experience. Does that trigger some people? That triggers me. <laughs> And then this is just a lovely little simple one to kind of show off the ARP possibilities of this library. It is called Optimistic ARP. And when you're dealing with so much inherent resonance in the part itself, you do have to pull the resonance back a little bit as the cutoff opens. I don't know if you saw that, but I have those two dancing like that. Just got a little too harsh without that. This one's called Overtoner, and it does, yes, focus on kind of the overtone vibe that this library has been giving me. And it features four parts. Got some clever stuff going on in the stereo image. I have to talk about that. So I've got it pretty much standard width, no rotation. And then the minute I raise the mod wheel, it closes the width so it kind of focuses the tone a little bit more and sends the rotation going crazy. Here's what that matrix looks like. Oh yeah, it gets really focused there. 
and the resonance is actually raising up. Very important point in the filter too. So it's giving that stereo image more to play with. This one's called reversed emotion and it's just kind of that standard one part reversed, one part normal trick that kind of pulls at the heartstrings. Really love this. Gets a little more zappy as you open the filter there. Very, very fun. Oh, I did do another part with one note sames. Soft gong, how could I forget? Pretty simple. Get a little bit of pitch control with the mod wheel. Very fun. Then I did a stage marimba. So this is just essentially two soft parts. I think I did, yeah, a little bit of tuning difference with the micro pitch kind of gives that sort of phasing effect the marimba has into an analog filter, EQ, compressor, Lexi reverb. What more can I say? I could noodle on that for days, literally days. This is another one that's just kind of a keys part. It's called Vibe Keys. I put the LFO to the micro pitch to give us a slow vibrato. Got some phaser and chorus action happening here, so pretty modulated. <laughs> You can really, really make out the difference in the velocities when you're amping it up with this many effects. Beautiful. And finally, I went way out with this one, and this one is called Way Out for that reason. <laughs> Four parts, one with some crazy micro pitch action happening. Check out this matrix here. This is a mistake. That should actually be the CC1 there. I'll look into that in a second, but got LFOs going to the delay time and the micro pitch of part four, as well as the pitch shift of the shimmer reverb. Modulation city, to say the least. okay to highlight the effects. It's okay to highlight the effects. That's kind of in the foreground here and it sounds awesome. So yeah, those are the programs. And I just wanted to show you a quick demonstration here. I've got the hard part pulled up with the 1928 grand, which I know I use a lot, but it's the one I know you all have. So why not show you how to use libraries with it, right? Very, very simple setup here. Just a little bias towards the tile floor keyboard into an analog filter, barely changed anything here. Same story with the shimmer reverb, just backed off the pitch mix, increased the size and decreased the time. I just wanna give you an example of how you can use this library to add flair, harmonic flair to other instruments. Gives it a little bit of a harder attack than maybe the 1928 through a filter and just makes it a more interesting, beautiful sound.
it's magic and it's fast. It's so quick. I literally just loaded up two parts through a filter and a shimmer reverb and boom, you have a beautiful, beautiful score. In a world of loops and digital instruments, it is harder and harder to find sounds that are really natural and original and organic sounding. And custom instruments like this are a great way to not only have its own unique vibe, but add that vibe to something else that is familiar. It's a fun one and you can use it for a ton of stuff. I mean, hits with resonance, just it's, it's endlessly useful. And I hope I demonstrated that today. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care.